All right, so in today's video, we are doing a review of the DOS Soundbox XL. And this Bluetooth speaker was sent to me by DOS. And if you remember in one of my previous videos, I actually sort of dissed the company almost, you could say. I did a What's Inside video. They had these speakers, very, very similar design to the Bose it's little speakers that, you know, how they pivot and whatnot. Anyway, they had a very similar design speaker, very similar to those, and I said basically that they were basically a replica. I called them Doze, uh, that was like pronouncing it like Bose. Anyway, nevertheless, this company is a legitimate company called DOS, and well, they offered to send me out one of their newer speakers uh, that was coming soon, and I said, in the meantime, could I have a look at the Soundbox XL, because I've seen this on YouTube before, and it's apparently really, really good, and long story short, if you just want to go straight to the conclusion, this is a very, very good Bluetooth speaker. However, there is one little bit of a drawback, which I will get to in a minute. So first of all, first impressions, I booted this thing up, the power button on the top just here. And wow, the first thing I did, pair it straight to my phone. And let me tell you, it's incredible. The startup sounds are like this. So a very sort of soothing sort of tone. That's then the Windows input, which is pretty unoriginal. Uh, that is the sound it makes when you connect to a device, which I guess makes sense because it's having something connected to it, but it's, I just, I wouldn't replicate a Windows sound personally myself. But anyway, you get onto the sound quality of this thing and trust me, it is absolutely unreal. If you are in the market for a Bluetooth speaker, I think I say this every time, but this time like we're talking like this is a lot better. If you're in the market for a Bluetooth speaker, I think this is cheaper than the JBL charge speakers. This is the way to go. It sounds awesome. On top, there is the power button. I'm just gonna talk whilst I'm setting up some music real quick. On top is the power button. Next to that is the mode button, which allows you to flip between Bluetooth, the 3.5 mil auxiliary on the back, the TF card input on the back, and as well as that back to Bluetooth. Next to that is volume up and down. It doesn't matter what you do, the volume up and down is always, always gonna be separate from your phone, uh, regardless of your Apple or Android, although Android seems to be syncing now, although I'm not too sure about my new phone. Nevertheless, Android syncs with it, uh, sorry, doesn't sync with it, neither does Apple phones. It's completely independent. I normally just turn this all the way up and use my phone controls anyway, regardless. Uh, but next to that, there's also a previous track, a next track, and a play pause button. Pretty simple stuff, pretty easy. I'm gonna try and get a song up real quick um, from a no copyright sounds playlist, and I'll just quickly give you a first impression sound of this speaker. So if you've watched any of my previous videos, you know that there's one song I always play, and that is Feels Right, this song right here. This is just my genuine test song that I test on every single Bluetooth speaker, just because it's a song that I'm familiar with, it's no copyright uh, on it. And well, yeah, so this is with no EQ at all. Uh, there's no EQ for Spotify on my new phone. Ah, uh, that's the wrong button. But listen, just listen to this. Say that it feels right. I don't know how well my mic will pick that up, but it sounds really, really, really good. And talking about it, battery life has seemed to be really good. I've had this cranking for an entire day before. It seems to get about 11 hours at about 50% charge if I wanted to throw a statistic at you. Uh, but it's it's definitely enough battery for a genuine day. Uh, to charge it is a little bit different. It's not like a micro USB like a lot of Bluetooth speakers are. In fact, the charging port on the back here is a 12 volt 2.5 amp plug, and it's not your normal size 12 volt plug. This is a bit of a uh, proprietary sort of size. I'm not gonna say that word actually, but it's just a smaller size than a genuine 12 volt plug that you'd normally, the 2.1 mil, it's a bit smaller than that. So. They do include a charging brick, of course, and as well as that an auxiliary port in the box. Uh, auxiliary, perfectly fine. Short little cable, little black one, uh, not too uh, solid of a cable. Uh, but they also, yes, come with the power brick for this, and I believe that is tailored to your country. I got an Australian one here, which is very unusual. A lot of these companies that send me stuff like this, I usually end up with a European or an American one, and... Um, yeah, it, I have to use an adapter to get it into the wall, but nonetheless, they sent the right one, charging brick. Uh, it's quite big. The actual power brick of it is in the part that plugs into the wall. So you, the cube is about that big and it plugs in the wall. It's quite big. Uh, so you can't plug anything in beside it unless you've got a widened PowerPoint, uh, which I've only got two in this house out in the garage. 
Nevertheless, uh, an issue a lot of people seem to have with this Bluetooth speaker is rattling behind the grill. And I will probably pull the grill off this in a minute because there is another drawback, which I will mention soon. Although I guarantee 99% of people don't experience it. But there's apparently a thing with these Bluetooth speakers that there's a vibration behind the grill. Uh, I've already had this apart, which I'll touch on again in a minute. Uh, but the foaming on the back, well, not the foaming, the foam on the back uh, seemed on my unit to be held down very well. It sort of seemed like it had a little bit of an adhesive on the back of this grill. I believe it is plastic, the grill, uh, but it seemed to have some sort of adhesive on the back here, uh, which stuck the grill down. There was no flapping, no vibration -y sound that I've heard of in previous videos. And on to my biggest negative with this speaker, which is completely my fault within reason. This speaker vibrates a lot. And when I say vibrates a lot, check out this video I took in my bathroom the other day. That's what I mean, like it vibrates a lot. It just, it can rattle itself around the table, um, which led to an issue that I've had with this speaker. I had it out in the garage. New phone doesn't have a 3.5 mil jack. Uh, the stereo out in the garage only has a 3.5 mil jack and the little adapters in my car, which is just parked up the street there. I can actually see it. Ooh. Um, basically, I was outside making stuff in the garage. The speaker's on the bench. The little rubber feet, which does have four rubber feet on the bottom. Uh, it also says DOS Bluetooth. Oh, I just turned it off and now it's back on. Uh, DOS speaker on the bottom, home speaker, battery model, uh, blah, 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 blah. All you need to know from the bottom is there's two 10 watt mid-range drivers and a 12 watt sub because this actually has a dedicated sub. Nevertheless, back to what I was saying before, had this in the garage, sitting on the workbench, just like this, right here, bit of dust on the bench, picked it up in the rubber feet and about, I don't know, I had hearing protection on, I was using the table saw and I just heard bang. And I turned around, speaker was on the ground. Uh, there's a little bit of a scuff. I don't know if my camera's gonna be able to show it uh, on, where's the camera, it's over there. Uh, there's a little bit of a scuff on this corner over here. It fell from probably the height of this table, about 900 mil to a meter, straight down onto concrete, and it stopped. And I was <laughs> pretty concerned because I hadn't made the video yet. And I was like, oh, there's, there's no way I'm gonna be able to make a video with a speaker that doesn't work. There's no way, because I always incorporate a sound test for video purposes, um, which I just did before, obviously. Um, and Nevertheless, I came inside, I plugged it into the charging brick, plugged it into the wall, turned it on, it came on. So immediately I thought the battery's just unplugged, pulled the grill off, went inside, pulled, I think it's 12 screws to hold the thing, uh, the faceplate in. Surely enough, I was correct. The uh, battery terminal had just come undone, plugged that back in. But ever since then, there's been this slight air leak around the woofer, the sub in the middle here. I'll take the grill off in a sec so you get to see a look at the design, but there's always been this really little air leak. Uh, and there's two songs in particular. I might actually cue one up really quick. So yeah, I don't know if you can hear that. But there is a very, very slight air leak just there. And it drives me crazy with this speaker now. But completely that aside, don't drop it a meter onto concrete and you won't have an issue at all. It's a very, very good sounding speaker. I highly, highly recommend it to you if you want to check it out. What we're going to do now is I'm going to flip it over. I always press the buttons on top. That's the noise it makes actually when you reach maximum volume on the speaker. I'm going to get a flathead screwdriver, just pry it here underneath the DOS logo and then pry it around like that. Very, very simple to do. And I'm gonna do that right now for the video, of course. And we'll have a look inside of this speaker, just show you the drivers. We'll get a little bit of excursion. We'll film it on the second camera and it's gonna look cool. So, so literally a little screwdriver just like this one right here is all you need. Start right here from the DOS logo in the middle. You'll see the grill will pry straight up. Put your finger under there and then pull it a little bit more to the right. You'll get a bit of the grill lifting out. And then it's as simple as that. It just clicks. It's way around. You just want to slowly lift, work your way to the corner, slowly lift, keep working your way to the corner. And then once you're like this, literally just bring it down, twist it a few times left and right. And you should be able to, although of course, because I'm shooting a video, I can't. There you go. Simple as that. So this is a bit of a copy or replica or shared design with a Sony Bluetooth speaker. We can see right here, we have the two full range drivers, the subwoofer driver in the middle and the passive radiators on the side. And this 
goes to show you right now that this speaker is no longer airtight. If we look over here on the second camera, if I press both these passive radiators in, the subwoofer driver rises up very quick and drops straight back down. That means that this box is in no way airtight anymore. So all the screws are done up so tightly around the perimeter. You can see there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. They are done up that tightly that I was worried I was gonna strip the plastic. Uh, however, it doesn't matter how tight I do anything. I've tightened the back of the sub up. I've tightened these full range drivers up. I cannot get rid of that air leak. I'm yet to try like siliconing it in, but I sort of wanted to, you know, release this video before I started messing around with stuff like that. So what I'm gonna do is we'll get this right up close and personal with the uh, second camera. We'll film some quick excursion. Uh, again, remembering this isn't airtight, so don't expect a great deal out of the passive radiators. Nevertheless though, let's hit up some bangers. Let's see what this thing can do. I will just say then the quality that you just heard would have been the inbuilt microphone on the Canon 80D because this one right here is set up for manual audio, meaning that that would have peaked the living crap out of the microphone. Whereas the one up there is actually currently just set on auto. So that'd be the mic that wouldn't be peaking. So default camera microphones don't expect great quality out of it. Nevertheless though, it sounds incredible. It gets extremely loud. Don't drop it on concrete and you won't have an issue, but that has been my review of the Sound DOS Soundbox XL. I really, really recommend this speaker. I'm actually really angry that I dropped it. I, I'm literally to the extent that I would almost buy a second one. That's how good this Bluetooth speaker is. I've just been sucking it up recently. If you wanna see a video of me trying to silicon the back of the uh, subwoofer driver to try and uh, fix that issue, let me know in the comment section down below. But this has been the Soundbox XL. If you guys have enjoyed this video, chuck a like on it. The link to purchase it will of course be in the video description. With that being said guys, I hope you have enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.